Here folks, good evening, early evening. Uh, it is Earthmaster here, jumping on the live stream. July 21st, 2021, about 5.07 p.m. West Coast time, and just doing a quick update video on that earthquake that struck out there uh, off the coast of Panama an hour or so ago. Uh, originally a 7.0 earthquake, downgraded by the USGS to a 6.7 magnitude earthquake and still nonetheless that's a pretty good strong uh, earthquake to say the least striking off the coast of uh, panama uh let's see here let's go ahead and oh well what are we doing playing shuffle the screens yes we are let's see what we got here stand by for one second i just got back from uh um the dixie fire up there in um chester area lake almanor um i'll talk a little bit more about that here in just a second but anyway looking at the usgs map here as we zoom into the panama area you can see that 6.7 earthquake off the coast about 10 kilometers or so below the surface in this frank fracture area this area uh, a few days ago actually seen uh, some further movement to the south and rather large at that 6.1 uh, back on the 17th about four days ago of this month and uh, even some earlier action there, 4.6 um, in that area uh, on the 16th. So a little bit of migration of movement up here. It's kind of a uh, very sensitive area when it comes to plate dynamics. A lot of historical earthquake activity uh, been reported in this region. I mean, you can take a look right there on this map, and it's a, it's a very seismically active zone all up along, along the uh, coast here into this... Uh, into this region the middle of america trench sits up here of course uh, off the coast of guatemala I have seen some uh earthquakes as well i think uh, i think it was a little bit past the seven day threshold but uh, i remember seeing quite a bit of earthquake activity some deeper movement uh, here as well and i think we're finally seeing the uh, results of that deep earthquake movement with these shallow larger quakes uh, down here to the south so 6.7, this was, uh, like I said, a couple hours ago. I don't think they issued any type of tsunami statement on it. Um, I was driving up in uh, the mountains. Yeah, it doesn't look like, see, originally a magnitude 7.0. And uh, yeah, it looks like they had, hadn't even issued a tsunami uh, advisory or anything for that earthquake that struck there. Uh, a short time ago so uh, what's been going on since and it looks like activity has picked up up here to the north of that Panama quake well well up into the North American uh, plate here along the west coast you can see some movement ramping up in the um, Antelope Valley area we've seen a little bit of larger magnitude there five or a 3.4 earthquake striking within the last hour um, and it looks as though yeah, it looks as though earthquake activity, the aftershock sequences is still still continuing uh, following that 6.0 that struck uh, about a week and a half ago, a week and a half ago there in the Antelope Valley area. Uh, Ridgecrest or uh, the Nevada earthquake swarm kind of ramping up as well, but away from the area where we've seen that fracture from that six pointer last year. Of course, we've been getting quite a bit of after aftershock activity in this region which is expected, but now we're kind of seeing a new swarm of activity away from that fracture zone. Uh, well off to the west near the Candelaria Hills. I remember I was out here uh, <clears throat> last year checking out some ghost towns uh, when I was looking at that earthquake activity last year. It was pretty cool, but there's not a whole lot out there. So we're gonna have to keep an eye on this. A little cluster of swarms uh, or earthquakes at the end of this unnamed fault system here, just off of it. So we're watching that, uh, some significant movement off the coast and into the inland area of Northern California. Some, some deep movement as well. 35 kilometers for this 4.4, striking uh, right about the area where the North American uh, Pacific Plate and the Juan de Fuca Plate all meet along this triple point junction. And the depth of this earthquake, 35 kilometers, tells me that it's no doubt subduction related. And it sits within the Cascadia Megathrust area, as well as these other deeper earthquakes, 1.7 and also a 2.6 into, further into the subduction zone of the Cascadia uh, area. So 
definitely uh, some movement that we need to take note of here in Northern California at the southern end of the Cascadia. In fact, all of these earthquakes right here within this zone are subduction zone quakes, even over here. Some of these quakes down 24 kilometers, 26 kilometers. It's not at the surface, that's down dip downstream the Cascadia subduction zone. I'm gonna have to watch that pretty closely. Uh, also some movement up here to the north into the Seattle area. Looks like a little bit of deeper movement up here as well. Um, not as significant as the movement in the Northern California area, but definitely, uh, I'm definitely seeing some activity there west of Mount Rainier as well. Um, let's see what else we got. <clears throat> Southern Cal. My voice is a little on the, I, I don't know how I could say it, maybe raw side from the smoke up there in, in Chester. Whew. It was really thick. Let me tell you, even with my windows rolled up. Uh, a little bit of activity on the San Jacinto Fault area, but overall not a whole lot of swarming or any type of uh, major movement there in Southern Cal. Uh, Yellowstone still showing some activity there at the lake. I haven't seen the Yellowstone map yet today, but uh, yeah, it looks as though, at least let's check out Lake Butte here, still some activity popping up. Every single one of these quakes, or every, one, every single one of those lines indicating an earthquake, microquakes, but earthquakes nonetheless, probably about 10 earthquakes or so within the last couple hours. Um, but as far as the significant swarming goes, it looks like it has calmed down uh, temporarily. We'll see how long that lasts there at Yellowstone National Park. Uh, a swarm of activity in Oklahoma, look at that, covering quite a bit. But I bet if we were to pull up any type of satellite, you would see that most of these would be taking place at fracking wells or injection sites. Uh, kind of tells me right there that we're looking at a lot of pressure movement around the uh, crate, North American Craton area, which kind of stretches down uh, in that type of fashion right up against Yellowstone uh, down into parts of Oklahoma. So uh, North American plate under quite a bit of strain. And the west coast, I think, uh, with that movement there at the uh, Cascadia subduction zone, kind of pointing to that area as well. Uh, strain, that is. Um, Pecos, Texas, seen some earthquake activity out there as well, uh, including some movement down here near, um, what's this place called? Smiley? Smiley, Texas. Right? Earthquake country. Who would have thought? Smiley, Texas out in earthquake country. I'm kind of curious. See what's going on here with the satellite view in this area. Whoa. Check out all those, <laughs> check out all those beautiful farmhouses. Are those beautiful farmhouses out there? What? No, they're not. Those are all uh, injection wells, pumping operations scattered about the land. And there's a lot of them. And these earthquakes are within, oh, a few hundred feet, if not a hundred feet or so within these pumping operations. Every single one of these things out here, a lot of pumping operations out in Texas. You can back out and uh, see how many there are. There's quite a bit. Uh, so I think we're starting to see some weak points uh, from the strain, so to speak, uh, at these injection sites and uh, creating some of those earthquakes. Not very, not very uh, large, but uh, man, I'm telling you, there's quite a bit there. Six of them in that area. What do we got? 3.1 being the largest. All right, rest of the globe here. Uh, very, very, very quiet along the western Pacific Rim. Over here along Japan, we did see a little bit of increased activity over here in the Papua New Guinea. That was uh, first, that was earlier today, prior to that 6.7 there uh, that we've seen on this side of the plate. Kind of weird how that works out, huh? Maybe not be connected right on that plate, but general regional movement can have a, a adverse effect over here on, on, on all these other different plate structures. That's a fact. Uh, so we had that six pointer. And some also uh, some deeper, deep, deep, deep movement over here in the Fiji Islands area. Uh, 567 kilometers for the deepest one. And sometimes we can see much deeper quakes here, but that's, that's, a, that's a good amount. All right, folks, I'm going to jump off here. Hope everyone has a good day. I don't think the trimmer map is up yet. I don't believe it is. Um, if something changes, I will jump on a little bit later and do an update. But uh, for now, have a good day. We'll chat you a little bit later. Peace out.